You're watching Boss TV with me, Diane Passard. Here are the Boss updates. We're going to be launching very, very soon Boss Media Radio. It's currently on test transmission, but stay tuned with us for the first transmission, which will be going live very, very soon. Look out in a little while because we're going to have our very own Boss Media News, which is going to be live from our Greenwich studio. Yes, we've got a new location here at Boss Media and we're very, very excited for its launch. So keep watching for our very first news. And that will be with myself, Diane Fassard. Thanks for watching, guys. This is Boss TV. You are watching Boss TV with me, Diane Passard, and now time for the news. The Royal Wedding was on Saturday the 18th of May 2018. Boss News headed to Windsor on the weekend to capture the Royal Wedding of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. The wedding took place at the remarkable St George's Chapel in Windsor, where the happy couple took their vows in front of friends, family, royals and many guests from across the world, including celebrities such as George Clooney and wife Amal tennis ace Serena Williams, Sir Elton John, David and Victoria Beckham, and Meghan's former Suits co-stars. The young bridesmaids and page boys included Princess Charlotte III and Prince George IV. Many anticipated what Meghan's dress would look like and what the comparison would be between Kate's V-neck dress that was designed by Sarah Burton for Alexander McQueen as well as Princess Diana's Grandoir Ivory tagged and antique lace wedding dress with puff sleeves and a 25-foot train. On the day, Meghan wore an elegant sculpted dress designed by British designer Claire Waits Keller, who recently became the first female artistic director at the House of Givenchy last year. The dress was a modest cut dress with long sleeves, a high neck design and a five meter long trail. The look was finished off with an elegant hair updo and a diamond tiara that had previously been worn by Queen Mary. To represent Meghan's US roots, Reverend Bishop Michael Curry, the first blackhead of the Episcopal Church in the United States, drew on the words of Martin Luther King with excerpts from The Power of Love. The late Dr. Martin Luther King once said, and I quote, we must discover the power of love the redemptive power of love. And when we do that, we will make of this old world a new world. For love, love is the only way. There's power in love. Don't underestimate it. Don't even over-sentimentalize it. There's power, power in love. If you don't believe me, think about a time when you first fell in love. The whole world seemed to center around you and your beloved. Oh, there's power, power in love. Not just in its romantic forms, but any form, any shape of love there's a certain sense in, in which when you are loved and you know it, when someone cares for you and you know it, when you love and you show it, it actually feels right. There's something right about it. And there's a reason for it. The reason has to do with the source. We were made by a power of love. And our lives were meant and are meant to be lived in that love. That's why we, were, we are here. Ultimately, the source of love is God himself. The boss team spoke to the public about their views on the marriage from the older and the younger generation. Let's see what they had to say. Because when you think of the royal family, you think of like, you know, old traditions and like, you know, like really strict protocols and everything. And I think Meghan brings something really new and like something exciting and something everyone can relate to. And I think that's really important for the royal family now, and especially at today's generation, to see and kind of look up to now. Because I feel like she 
it helps them be more in touch with the generation like yeah, especially with like Kate um, William and Harry in general but also with Megan in there they're just like they kind more of diverse. yeah it represents like us as like a country read somebody that wasn't necessarily royalty um, was probably the beginning of change in essence to um, unionship between the royalty and society. Um, the fact that Kate came from uh, a working class family, had no association to the royalty, but married in, um, and now having uh, Harry uh, marry somebody of ethnic origin um, was kind of the next leap from um, Kate and William. Tress is, is, is a, a strength, a key strength that she will bring in terms of the duties and the role that she will be expected to play and, the, you know, in terms of her, her being a duchess, you know, going forward. So she obviously, she will be expected to sort of, you know, make some appearances. So this is her actress role and skill set will come into play and that will be a big strength for her in terms of, you know, connecting with people empathizing, sympathizing, you know, being able to sort of, you know, be a, a, a role model and, and, and uh, particularly young girls, you know, someone to look up to in terms of how she carries herself. So I personally think that she will adapt very, very well. I think as a person, you know, the personality would, what I would like to see would be, be a good balance of her personality as a black woman coming out as well in those roles and in terms of what she represents within the royal family and not just be so consumed with just aspect of what the royal family is expected of her but have her own personality and her own touch on certain things that she would like to you know and I think you'd like to interject as well yeah I would just say because of her age she's a mature lady she's experienced with life and I think she will bring a lot to the family and I don't think she'll be intimidated I think she will hold her own and um, I think they're really grateful <laughs> we're grateful that we've got somebody that we can say is the duchess and part of the royal family i think that's absolutely correct she knows her mind and uh, we hope that that would sort of project itself in everything that she does in whatever she represents when she's representing herself and the royal family the people watching worldwide what we've experienced today this is a landmark it's it's something that we stem from slaves and our forefathers would never have dreamt that in an establishment that we have here, that a black family would be presently strong in a situation where we have to now move forward and be accepted as a black race. For me, I feel very proud and honored to be of the race I come from because Megan and her family, seeing her mother there, a Rasta woman with locks, I'm British and for us to even see that happening, it's wow, you know, it's, you re it really makes your heart feel glad. For Prince Charles to actually be saying to his son, here, I approve, in whatever form it may have been, that makes my heart glad. So Meghan, for me as a black woman, a black conscious woman and for everyone around the world, the millions of people that have seen this today, I want them to lift their heads up and know that we move forward. Everyone has to learn from this example here in the UK. All the Trumps, the politicians worldwide, Brexit, this is a new era. We have to think about migration, we have to think about where we stand politically, where we are in the corporate world, we can do it. And Megan, her presence, that colour will always be seen out there in the world. So I'm very happy, very proud, and we're here today. Some of us are fairly quiet, some of us are making noise, but together as girls, we are proud of the wedding today. And we just want the whole world to say yes, from slaves, We've moved forward to a new era and I hope the political world, the political leaders of this world look, realise, think and move forward. I was particularly impressed by Megan's performance today. It started off by the way that she approached the church on her own 
And that took quite a lot of strength for a black woman. And I said, go sister, this is how you show them. You can do it on your own and move on. And you spoke about the, uh, you know, uh, as a black person, I think she has experience on both sides. You know, the mother, the mother is black, the father is white, white. And she's experienced that all her life. So that I think she has some of the qualities, she's experienced what it is to be called black as white. So she's able to transfer that and support her husband in, in the commonwealth that she, she's, she's now, um, she has the role with her husband that she's been able to perform that. So I think for all of us, that quite a lot of young black people are quite impressed and it's someone that they would emulate because what they're saying is, look, there's someone just like me, she's black, and she can be a princess, and it's unheard of. And I, I, I think it also brings back to me with Obama. You never thought that Obama was going to be a black president. We've now got a black duchess. Uh, one that and we've I been able wish to enjoy. All the best. Cheers and, to you, my sister. Um, yeah, moving forward, a black woman, the center of the uh, uh, royal family. Um, I'm hoping to see bigger and better things to happen. Um, yes, definitely as a young woman and outside of the establishment, she can bring new, um, new ideas and new um, ways of doing things away from how the establishment used to do it. And I'm just happy and really want to see that take place. Thank you, Chris, for that report. Now, here are the latest on the Brexit negotiations. For many of us, Brexit can be quite confusing as it is still undecided. Here is a Boss News Brexit special on The Breakdown. On the 23rd of June 2016, citizens of the United Kingdom voted to leave the European Union. On the 29th of March 2017, the UK formally notified the European Council of its intention to leave by triggering off Article 50 of the Lisbon Treaty. Currently, the United Kingdom remains a full member of the EU and rights and obligations continue to fully apply in and to the UK. At the beginning of the year, on the 29th of January 2018, EU27 ministers adopted a new set of negotiating directives giving details on the EU27 position on the transition period. Here are the main points. The proposal end date for the transition period in negotiating directives is the 31st of December 2020. During the transition period, the whole of the EU acquires will continue to apply to the UK as if it were a member state, and any changes to it would also apply in the UK. The UK will remain bound by the obligations stemming from the agreements concluded by the EU, while it will no longer participate in any body set up by those agreements. The UK, as already a third country, will no longer participate in the institutions and the decision making of the EU. All existing EU regulatory, judiciary and enforcement instruments and structures will also apply, including the competence of the Court of Justice of the European Union. And now for the conclusion. The UK has voted to leave the European Union. It is scheduled to depart at 11pm UK time on Friday 29th of March 2019. The UK and EU have provisionally agreed on the three divorce issues of how much of the UK owes the EU what happens to the Northern Ireland border and what happens to the UK citizens living elsewhere in the EU and EU citizens living in the UK. Talks have now moved on to future relations after agreement was reached on a 20-month transition period to smooth the way to post-Brexit relations. It refers to a period of time after the 29th of March 2019 to December 2020. This is to get everything in place and to allow businesses and others to prepare for the moment when the new post-Brexit rules between the UK and the EU begin and a new relationship is to be built. Free movement will continue during the transition period as the EU wanted. The UK will be able to strike its own trade deals, although they won't be able to come into force until the 1st of January 2021. Both sides hope they can agree with six months on the outline of future relations on things like trade, travel and security. If all goes to plan, this deal could then be given the go-ahead by both sides in time for the 29th of March 2019. 
Theresa May had delivered the big speech setting out her thoughts on the UK and EU's future relations on the 2nd of March of this year. The UK government and the main UK opposition parties both say Brexit will happen. There are some groups campaigning for Brexit to be halted, but the focus among the UK's elected politicians has been on what relationship the UK has with the EU after Brexit, rather than whether Brexit will happen at all. As things stand, Britain is still set to leave the European Union. So stay tuned with us at Boss News as we follow the updates. And now for the FA Cup highlights. Chelsea's victory in the FA Cup final against Manchester United. What is the future for Antonio Conte? Chelsea beat Manchester United recently, 1-0, uh, a disappointing end for Manchester United, with Eden Hazard scoring the only goal of the match for Chelsea. Despite the win on Chelsea's manager Antonio Cote's future at the club remains uncertain, with former Barcelona coach Luis Enrique amongst the lineup to replace him. Conte has won the Premier League and the FA Cup in two seasons at Chelsea, but his departure has long been expected. Even with the triumph of winning, Conte added, it's right for the club to take the best decision. The win on Saturday cannot change an assessment of my work. Uh, 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 a really strong team, a really great team uh, like Manchester United, we must be pleased. I, I can't change. I can't change. And... Uh, I'm this, I'm this, and uh, uh, I think that my my past speaks very clear as a player and as a manager. Because I repeat, and you can tell what you want, but I'm a serial winner, and uh, I show this also in England, in a in a difficult moment for for the club after a tenth place, and uh, I think that uh, I have showed. Uh, this uh, also today because uh, I think that uh, we found the right way to win this trophy. I'm Diane Posada with here with Boss TV News. Thank you for watching.